Kingdom Living. Today I want to talk to you about Reformation. Reformation has a sound to it. You can hear it. It is the, it is the, the thundering of a different spirit. In the book of Joel, and we, we, often, uh, we often minister this verse, but in Joel chapter 3, verse 9, it says this. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. And let the weak say, I am strong. Notice what he says. He says, prepare for war. Now, this is the same, the same prophet that Peter spoke about. That in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all men, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall have visions. And upon my servants and my handmaidens I will pour out of my spirit, says the Lord, upon them. But notice what the same prophet says. He says this spirit will be a spirit that says prepare for war. In other words, wake up the mighty men. There shall be a stirring in your spirit. And out of your spirit shall come a sound. It is the sound of reformation. It is the roar of Zion that comes up out of God's mighty warriors. So he says this, he says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. There cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. He says, Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the presses are full, the vats overflow, for the wicked this is great. Then he says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. For the Lord also, listen, shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. God is our hope and he is our strength. Those of us that, that, that call themselves under the, under the household of God through faith, we need to understand something. There is a roar of liberty. It is the roar that comes out of Zion. When you and I gave our lives to, to the Lordship of Christ, we, we were translated out of darkness into the kingdom of God. In other words, from the, from the jurisdiction of darkness into the jurisdiction of light. Now what God is saying is that you and I have both rights and responsibility. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon us, it will awaken the mighty men. It will stir up our spirits and we will be salt and light in a dark uh, generation. Now in Psalms 46 verse 1 it says God is our refuge. He is our strength. He is a very present help in trouble or in times of need. But notice what it says. God is our refuge but he is also our strength. God is looking for people to be hungry and thirsty after him. Matthew 21 says, says something. Matthew 21 verse 13. Jesus said that prayer is the dominant thing that would identify his house. And he said it like this. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. You know, prayer is not some sort of a religious um, formula. Prayer is communication with God. It's worship, it's homage, it's intimacy, but it's also, uh, there's dynamics in prayer because God speaks back to us. He pours out his spirit upon us. So there is a, you know, thousands of people pray, but, um, but, but there is the spirit of prayer. And the spirit of prayer is what produces reformation. We can pray and have no dynamics to it. But when you come together through hunger and through thirst and you begin to pursue the things of God, what happens is that God pours out his spirit upon you and the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that liberty produces a, 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 a fervency that comes up out of your born again spirit and it has a sound to it. It is the sound of liberty. It is the sound of reformation. It is a sound that, that says, wake up the mighty men. Let 
Let them uh, draw to the battle lines. Let them prepare themselves for war. Let them beat their plowshares into swords and fight the demonic principalities and powers that try to come in and enslave the people of God. But see, God has a people. Jesus said, my house shall be identified because it will be a house of prayer. The spirit of prayer shall come upon the people. The people will call unto me and I will answer them and I will show them great and mighty things that they know not of. James said it like this in, in James 5, 16. He said, he said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In the, um, in the Amplified Bible, it says it like this. It says that uh, fervent prayer, in other words, prayer that's bold, prayer that's strong, prayer that's fervent, that it makes much power available. And I believe the anointing, that you get through fervent prayer will put inside of you a different spirit. It is the spirit of reformation. It is the spirit of liberty. And it will stir you up to engage the principalities and powers, that which tries to en en enslave people. And it will, because see, listen, the anointing, the anointing is confrontational. Because, you remember the scripture in Isaiah 27 that says the anointing breaks the yoke and the anointing removes the burden? Well, the anointing is confrontational because it will attack anything that tries to enslave you or tries to put you into bondage. Now, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In other words, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it will put upon you a spirit of liberty so that the sound of reformation comes out of your spirit too. So what, what do we do? How do we, how do we get this, this fervent spirit? How do we get this, this anointing of liberty, this roar of Zion that comes out of the church? How do we, how do we, how do we get to that? And I believe it has everything to do with, with your thirst. Jesus said, blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So what we have to do, we have to really guard our hunger. We have to really guard our thirst. Are you thirsty for the things of God? Are you hungry for the things of God? Or do you have an apathetic, lukewarm spirit? Because Jesus said, I will spew you out of my mouth if you are lukewarm. That's not the, that doesn't come from the Lord. So what we have to do is we need to, you know, remember when the, when the Apostle Paul sent the letter to Timothy? He said, Timothy, he said, he said, Stir up the spirit that's in you through the laying on of my hands. So now he didn't say go to God to get God to stir up that spirit that's in you. He said, no, Timothy, you do it. You stir up the Holy Ghost that's in you. My brothers and sisters, you know, maybe it might look like we're in times of trouble, but I submit to you that, that uh, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. At the end of the day, we win. So be encouraged. The Lord is that spirit. Amen. And he's a very present help in time of need, in time of trouble. You know what? I want to have the same reputation that those that hung out with the Apostle Paul had. Those that have turned the world upside down, they have come here too. And that's you. You're part of a winning kingdom. God bless you. And until next time, remember that Jesus Christ is our Lord. God bless you. I'll see you again.